Good morning, friends. Um, you know, Jesus said that you know more my slaves, you are my friends. And then the, I thought the disciples should have felt that, hey, so we can speak with this man at any time because he's our friend. He's no more uh, uh, that we can't talk with him. And Jesus is good, you know, all the time we see that what he do for us and and more especially when we are at the table this morning, we can say that, Lord, your mercies endureth forever. Amen. And uh, maybe some of you might th thought that Ediri Pastoria Anna Sang 109. But when, when I always look at marvelous grace, it is deep in my heart that uh, it is this grace that man cannot understand what God has done for us. Remember in the Garden of Eden, God said that if you eat of this tree, you will surely die. But uh, Genesis 3.15 gave, gave us another picture of that his mercies endureth forever. He made a plan for all of us, and that's why we are here. You will even see our title this morning, Crippled and Broken. You know, many times we will come to the house of God here. Some of us are stricken, you know, and there is nothing good about us. And you, you're just here. And uh, the Lord says that even if you are crippled and broken, come to this hospital because I am the great physician. Starting this morning, let us read in the book of 2 Samuel chapter 9, a few verses down the line from verses 1. And, uh, and see what the Lord has for us in this particular pericope. Um, 2 Samuel chapter 9, 1 to 8. And I read in your hearing. I'm so happy to hear pages of Bible still, because nowadays it's only the, the electronic stuff, but uh, we thank God for Bibles too. And let us read. David asked, is there anyone still left of the house of Saul to whom I can show kindness for Jonathan's sake? Now there was a servant of, Saul, of Saul's household named Seba, Seba, whatever you would like to call it. They summoned him to appear before David and the king said to him, Are you Seba? At your service, he replied. Verses 3 says, The king asked, is there no one still alive from the house of Saul to whom I can show God's kindness? Seba answered the king, There is still a son of Jonathan. He is lame in both feet. Where is he? The king asked. Seba answered, He is at the house of Maki, son of Amil in Lodibar. So the king so King David had him brought from Lodibar, from the house of Maki, son of Amil. When Mephibosheth, son of David, the son of Saul, came to David, he bowed down to pay him honor. David said, Mephibosheth, at your service, he replied. And verse 7 is the one that I like so much. Don't be afraid, David said to him. For I will surely show you kindness for the sake of your father, Jonathan. I will restore to you all the land that belonged to your grandfather, Saul. And, all, and you will always eat at my table. Mephibosheth bowed down and said, What is your servant that you should notice a dead dog like me? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, this is your word. And I pray, Father God, as you work within our hearts and in our minds and help us to understand the message that you would like to bring over to us. Pray that you will bless us now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, as you know that this Holy Communion, my time is limited. But let me, allow me to give you just a few background of this story of 
David and Mephibosheth and Jonathan and Saul and so on. Now David's kingdom was now secure in terms of all the relatives of David, of Saul, were killed. In other words, the man was sitting there and know that everything is fine now. And there was little danger of any of the descendants of Saul seeking to obtain the throne of David. Now that David said that I'm okay now, I'm settled. The king's gener generous nature now manifests itself in his desire to show some kindness to the memory of, Gen of Jonathan. Now remember the story of Jonathan and David, how they were together and have this intimate relationship with each other. And we see that, uh, you know, when there's a text in the Bible where the Bible says that, be still and know that I'm God. Many times we also need to become still and just look back what your father and your grandfather and those who were with you in your life when you were being brought up. Many times we forget about them and because we are on a better space now, Remember, David was on his throne when he said these words. And the first point that I would like to highlight in this text is in verses 1, they say that the kindness of God. Now, now, you know, sometimes we can be kind to people, but if it doesn't come from the heart, it is difficult. People can see that we just pretend, but we are not really that kind. And believers are to be kind and forgiving to one another, following the example of Christ Jesus, our Lord. You know, it's always good to smile. When you come into the door that this morning, when I entered into the door, uh, I think she must be a deaconess, but, but she was so lovely and uh, smiling to me. And I said, no, this is how it should be. And we thank God for that. What does kindness mean? It is to be considerate. Someone who is considerate pays attention to the needs and wishes or feelings of others. Because many times we don't think. We just say things. And kindness could also be that thoughtfulness. You are thoughtful if you consider how, you, how your actions and words will affect other people's feelings. Many times we don't think before we say things. No, no, no. You see, David had to sit on his throne and look around and see that, hey, the Lord has blessed me. As the Bible would say in Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and God's righteousness, and God will add all these other things unto you. And therefore, I think for myself that when he was thinking and then looking at his kingdom, and he was like, Lord, I've not worked for these things. You took me from the ship down there. My brothers were parading in front of Samuel, but you, you God, you look for me. And therefore, the Bible says in Ephesians 4, 31, the Bible reads here, Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. And then 32 says that, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ God forgave you. He is our Savior. Brothers and sisters, it won't help us to come here Sabbath after Sabbath and there is nothing within our hearts that we can forgive others. Let us be more kind to one another. God, forgive us, not because we forgive others, but solely because of his great mercies who are new every morning. His great mercies. And you know, you just wake up and you open your eyes and you see you're moving around. You get to the bathroom. You say that, Lord, thank you. I can see I'm still the same person like last night. The Lord is beautiful, brothers and sisters. His mercies endureth forever. As we come to understand his mercies, however we will want to be like him. 
as we understand how kind God is to us, we will understand that, hey, let me also be kind to my brother and my sister. Brothers and sisters, I don't know about you. There might be some things in your life. And, but remember, your life is just for today. Tomorrow you cannot count. And therefore, it is time that you pray and ask the Lord, Lord, help me, even if I cannot start to be kind to others, but let me start and pray for that particular person. Having received forgiveness, we will pass it on to others, brothers and sisters, because God is good. That's why David's desire, there's a text in the Bible, in Afrikaans, it's beautiful, uh, 36 verses, verses 4. 37 verses 4, it says that, Verlustig jou in die Heere, en hy saal jou gee die begeertes van jou hart. Delight yourselves in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. And that is what David, while he was sitting on his throne, he said that I can eat. I've got a table. And when I look around, no person of the descendants of Saul is around me. In other words, I'm safe. David's desire was to do good to his old friend, Jonathan. Remember, Jonathan was supposed to be second, or rather, to take the kingdom from his father. But you know what? You will not be able to understand what the two went through. It was like, Jonathan, are you real? But yes, when God is with you, you will be real. That's why it is in Psalms 23 where it says that, what does it say? The Lord is my shepherd. Not, I'm not including others. It begins with me. Is my shepherd. On my table, I lack nothing because I know that hooded and chins saw me out it for. Brothers and sisters, David was determined what about me and you, brothers and sisters? Can we show kindness to each other or is that bitterness and anger still there? Friends, in the generation of our time, people find it hard to show kindness or forgiveness to each other. As David said that, or rather as Paul says that, forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave us. Remember the Our Father? And sometimes we pray that prayer, but it's not from the heart. You remember the I Surrender? We sang the songs, but we don't mean it. I surrender all. Jesus does not just show us kindness, but he gave his life for me and you in order to have life, and not just life, but life in abundance. And that is how God has done for us, brothers and sisters. David was on his throne when he sat in and, 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 and he meditated how to show kindness to somebody out there. But we have got somebody out here. We've got somebody who have done it more than abundance. He says that, but Jesus was on the cross when he said to his father, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they are doing. David might sit on his throne and say, I want to show kindness to somebody out there. I want to be merciful to somebody out there, but it must be a descendant of soul. But the one on the cross of Calvary, he was hanging there and said that, Father, the ones, the very ones who put these nails through my hand, the very ones who put a spear in my side, the very ones who put the stone on my head, please show kindness to them. You may feel broken and crippled this morning, but our Savior had paid it all. 
He has paid it all. It doesn't matter where you are in Lodibar this morning. You, you, God as will call you back and say, come back, my child. I want you to sit at my table. Friends, as Mephibosheth was called from Lodibar, he never thought that he would ever sit with the king at his table. There's no way. Remember, he was listening to stories about how Saul and, and David had fought the, these, uh, the anger between them and, and so on, what the, uh, Saul had. But, but and then he listened to his stories of, of his father and the relationship that he had with, with David. And one can just think for yourself that when I ever sit at the table of King David. Friends, I've got news for you this morning. Jesus is calling you and me to sit at this table this morning. No, not at the other table. This one this morning. Because he said that, do it in remembrance of me. David, yes. That young boy could sit at the table. But this table is different. This table is that is to say that you are the only savior. You are the only redeemer. Yes, you are the only deliverer. Jesus is his name. David said to Mephibosheth, you will always eat at my table. Jesus said to the thief on the cross, and said to him that today I'm telling you, you will be with me in paradise. Praise God. Brothers and sisters, it's time when you read the scriptures, you can see that how God is putting things in place in order for just to bring us closer to him. There is an eternal life. Jesus is coming. Point is that, will you be there? And will I be there? David put to the young man these words, as Jesus will also put it to us this morning, is that, that don't be afraid. Don't fear. Relax. You're in the presence of royalty. You're in the presence of the king of Israel. Brothers and sisters, family and friends, anyone in the footsteps of, on the, in, the, in the boots of uh, Mephibosheth, uh, he will also feel that, no, 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 I can't do this. Uh, they is going to kill me. The life of this descendant of Saul depended upon the attitude of the king. You, you didn't hear that. The life of uh, Mephibosheth has depended upon the attitude of the king. How will he react when he sees me? But his generous nature, together with his promise to, to, Jonathan, to Jonathan, prompted him to, cause, to a cause of kindness and mercy. You know, and it's just a text come to mind where it says that uh, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we were just there, you know, at a Shabin, at the nightclub, at all the places where you're not supposed to be, Christ died for you. So that you may be here this morning. We've got history as we are sitting here. If God allows uh, the, to just to display each one's history on, he, on here, some of us would like to say that, Lord, let me rather die. Mephibosheth, brothers and sisters, he was like, no, I can't do this. The life of this descendant was dependent upon the attitude of the king. But uh, the nature, you know, there's always this thing that, that, that you need to have this relationship with God. And, and, and you know what? Psalms 51 verses 10 says, create in me a pure heart, O God, and give me a steadfast spirit. In other words, when I want to be generous and good and kind to others, it needs to come from the heart. Amen. 
Oh, brothers and sisters, you don't need to fear any longer. We have an advocate with God. He is standing in for us. This is in other words, when you stand in court, it doesn't matter this court here or the court above there. You have Jesus. You don't need to fear. Because he said, I am your God. He is our advocate. David concluded by saying, I will restore or replace or reinstate everything that you have lost. In other words, he said that, you know, your, your grand, we, we fought by myself and your grandfather. We, we, we were not good, but, but now I'm going to restore. I'm going to give back to you everything that you have lost. Our Savior took upon himself the punishment that was, upon, well, that was for us in order for us to share eternity with him. Isaiah 53, you read that one? By his stripes, we are saved. Now, now, now there sat the young man with, with the king on his ta- at his table, and he was like, yeah. You know, sometimes, brothers and sisters, we might be kept in Lodiba, fast gefang, through different types of things in your life. But when God calls you, he will catch you. And this morning he says that, come now, let us reason together. Though your sins be like scarlet, I, the Lord, will wash them as white as snow. He is still that Savior. He is still that one who says that I've put everything upon my soldiers. And I know that if anybody here this morning would say that, Lord, it is hard for me. Many times I come here crippled and broken. There are so many things that happen in my life that I never know. It, it will never get right. Because I know that I've went through these things almost alone. Then the Lord says, that, no, my child, when you go through deep waters, I was there with you. When you go through fire, I was there all the time. You ask the three Hebrew boys, when they were working in that fire, I was there. When Daniel was in the lion's den, never thought that he would come out alive there. He said, that, no, my son. I will close their mouth. And even if I had to turn them to eat grass and no more flesh, I can even do that as well. But this time around, you will be alive because I am the one who will give you that life. Brothers and sisters, as I conclude, yes, friends, we feel crippled this morning, but Jesus says that I am the one who is the resurrection and the life. And I would like to conclude with this text in Revelation chapter 21 verses 4. And the Bible reads here as follows. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And I'm just thinking of that young man. While he was sitting there, his ankles broken, knowing that there's no more hope for him in life. Never will he ever see royalty in his life. And God came through for him. And that's why our Savior says that he will wipe every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, no sorrow, no crying. There shall be no more pain, no, for the former things have passed away. Yes, Lodiba, I know I was staying there, but it was not so good. Many times I didn't have anything to eat. But now I can sit at the table of the king. But brothers and sisters, there's another table, and it's this table. Don't go away from this table, because it's this table that will lead you into the kingdom of heaven, where the Lord will say that, I will wipe away your tears. Yes, pain will be, will, will be there no more. Death, even so. And he says that, I will make all things new. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you this morning and may he give you peace in his name. Amen.